Grand Rising Wonderful Souls and welcome to Bromans Cove Tarot. This is a timeless collective reading on what is coming forward. I apologise for not having my usual view which is panned that way. Um, I've had microblading done on my eyebrows and I had it done today so my eyebrows are looking really intense. So I'm going to be waiting until they have completely healed before I will be filming how I usually do. Um, I hope that isn't an inconvenience for anyone here. I hope you're doing well. Um, please know that this is a... Um, my readings are for entertainment purposes only. I'm going to do the legal disclaimer so we can crack on. Um, anything that comes up in the areas of law, finances, um, health, um, whether that be your physical health. I want to say health and safety for some reason. Whether that's to do with your mental health, your physical health, know that I am not a professional in those areas. I don't claim to be one either. Anything that comes up, you must use your discernment, your common sense and speak to somebody in those areas if it really resonates for you before taking any advice from me, from a tarot reader or from spirit. OK, if I say he or she, I am picking up on energies. OK, just energies. Um it's up to you whether or not you assign a gender. You don't have to if you don't want to. You can swap them around if it makes your story fit better. But please do not try and make the story fit if it doesn't. Okay. Now, let's crack on. Where do I want to put this one? It's awkward. I feel very awkward with this today. Why? Let me pop you over there. Why are you so awkward? Hmm. I am picking up the energy of somebody from the past. There's something here with um, the way someone walked away from a situation. The way someone walked away from a situation. Before I start with this, I am going to do my bell here. If you have any type of sound sensitivity, please turn down your volume now. I will be doing this just to cleanse the air, okay? Okay, let's see. What wants to come through, Spirit? Let me see. Make sure you rest. Make sure you rest came out as the first thing here. I feel like somebody, um, there's something about the past that's coming up and it's heart with a key came out. Okay, why? Welcoming love, meeting the one, open your heart, getting together and perfect. And it also says make sure that you rest. So there may be someone new coming in and the reason why we're talking about someone from the past because there is something that may... I heard you need to listen, you need to listen to your heart, but you need to listen to your heart and not fear or a wound, okay? Because we've now got a lot of swords coming out. How interesting. And a boat. And we have, you are the reason for my happiness right now. So you have stabbed in the back, heartbreak, pain, separation, deception, shocking attack. You have sword in the rose. Clarity, truth, revelation, solidarity force honor protection and power then you have boat receive receiving what you need progression arriving moving on closure issues it seems like as one cycle ends a new one will be opening and i'm and that's kind of obvious right but it's more to do with um as someone here has healed from the past this will be opening and i keep getting that um someone from the past is really shocked at the way that you walked away or the way that you were confident in yourself in going do you know what i just need to leave without making any drama without making any fuss um because this stabbed in the back there was some sort of deception here there may have been some sort of shocking attack whether that was physical and I'm, if that is you know um one trigger warning for anyone that has been through domestic v um and if, if that has happened or you're going through something like that, please make sure that you do reach out to your doctor or reach out to your therapist or reach out to somebody that can help you and, and get you into a safe space. Um, so as I'm reading this, if this is someone from the past that isn't safe for you, um, the only advice I can give is to stay away from them and make sure that you have a support system around you. Um, for others, this person, I don't know if this if if you thought this person was the one because there's welcoming welcoming love meeting the one opening your heart getting together and perfect are you someone who opens up very easily or is very i heard over an oversharer and it doesn't mean that you are oversharing your emotions or how you feel it may be perceived like that by other people who aren't as invested in their own emotional well-being because when you start to kind of like dive into the whys of how you feel or where those wounds are and start healing them the more expressive or comfortable you're going to feel in being expressive 
if the person that you were dating or the people that you were around in the past weren't as comfortable at doing so they may see it as being over and over and sharing it's almost like when when somebody says oh stop being so sensitive and it's like well i'm not being sensitive i'm literally being open to emotions and if you see that as being sensitive it's because you aren't open to that and i'm getting that someone here was very open with how they express themselves um and in how to foster a good communication in some way and you've got here i'll show you these two you also have the sword and the rose clarity truth revelation solidarity force honor protection and power and then boat it's giving me double energy right it's giving me the energy of someone from the past um not treating you or someone in the collective the way they were supposed to the way that you were you deserve to be and i don't know if this was at some point um a cause of many arguments of being you are taking me for granted or you are taking advantage of me or you don't hear me or you're not listening to me you, you know i'm telling you what my needs are and you keep ignoring or making up excuses as to why you can't support those needs or <clears throat> i'm ill it's giving me that energy and this heart with a key with welcoming love meeting the one opening your heart and getting together and perfect maybe there was a honeymoon kind of phase where either you or the other person didn't show their true their true self and that happens quite a lot on both sides it can happen to those who are purposely trying to deceive and others who you've got to think in the first three months of a, a relationship we stay on our best behavior our best behavior of like you know not showing um our our tics or our um or quirks trying to kind of mold to what the other person likes and the other person's doing the same thing and you hide the parts of you that you see as a flaw right there is definitely this energy of arguments where somebody was like why aren't you you aren't the person that i used to know or you aren't the person when i first met you you've changed you've changed and it's like no i've evolved or i've let down my guard i'm showing you the whole of me now and this clarity for someone it's almost like there's a full circle coming around, okay? So there's someone from the past that when you walked away from them or someone from the, the collective walked away from them, they did so with a lot of power and a lot of honour to themselves. There was a clarity that came through that even though either you or this person loved them very much, they were deceiving themselves or they were disempowering themselves and disempowering the other person by expecting them to change or expecting something to change when the cards have been put on the table so many times i heard and this clarity came to someone it was like a stab it was like a stab in the back for someone here and i don't know if this is you or the person from the past when they realized that they had been deceiving either you or deceiving themselves in this relationship and there is utter shock at how somebody moved themselves away from this relationship i heard they did that they did so with grace for some, they may have just ghosted and that may have been the best thing because when you have one person who doesn't want to listen, and when I mean they don't want to listen, it's that energy of, I want to tell you my needs. I want to tell you what it is that I'm feeling and the other person going, well, I did something wrong, did I? You know, And then going into the defensive rather than just listening and going, do you know what? I'm going to be objective about this. You have needs, I have needs. This person, I feel... Um, Every time someone went to them in this relationship and said, this is how I'm feeling, or I'm feeling left out, or I'm feeling neglected, or I don't feel like you're, you know, helping, you're, you're taking care of my emotional needs, this person would jump to some sort of um, defensive, well, what about when you did blah, 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 and well, I try my best. There was never any kind of like, okay, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. This, someone here is realising this. Or they, I heard how easy it was for someone to walk away. They see it as um, you or whoever this is finding it easy to walk away. But it was more to do with self-empowerment. Because receiving what you need, progression, arriving, moving on and closure issues. Someone here chose themselves first. Someone put themselves first. There's confirmation. Someone put themselves first. You are the reason for my, my happiness right now. Now this can literally be a, a future person. This could be yourself. This literally can be yourself. This is giving me the energy of a past person, someone new coming in this new cycle, and the reason why this new person is coming in now. So this is really um, for my singles. This is for someone who is open and ready to move on. Um, there has been this period of kind of pouring love into yourself 
or pouring love into the needs that you have or learning what your needs are. Because if you are an overgiver, if you are somebody who's an over nurturer, someone who's always been pouring into the other person, when you are given that time to still your mind or you're given that time to actually focus on yourself and ask yourself, well, what is it that I need? What is it that I want? And when we really sit with that and we find out what it is and we start fulfilling those needs, that's when we start vibrating and manifesting in people who can complement that. Because this isn't about someone coming in to make you happy or make this person in the collective happy. This is about someone coming in that actually just matches the vibration of the happiness that you've already found because now you're pouring into yourself and finding out what your needs are. And there is definitely this contemplation coming in from someone in the past who's going, how is it so easy for you to walk away? And in the same breath going, but I know I didn't treat you well. This receiving what you need, progression, arriving, moving on and closure issues. There's, there's someone from the past who's having issues with finding closure from this relationship because they feel like you are the one that got away. But make sure you rest. So... Make sure you're not overdoing it, okay? Not every day has to be a shadow work day. You don't have to be doing therapizing on yourself every day. But you also don't have to be on the go all the time either is what I'm hearing. You are the reason for my happiness right now. So who's this? Who is this? Because there, there's, there, I sometimes get double meanings, triple meanings from one card. God is helping me right now. If this is someone from the past, um, this person may have had um, some sort of spiritual awakening or they're contemplating life. But I'm getting like there's definitely mixed energies coming through. Okay, tell me a little bit more about this past person and then we can move on. Tell me a bit more about this past person with God's helping them right now. Messy. The energy is still very messy here. Grim Reaper, the relationship is over, no second chances, grow and transform your life. This person knows that they have no way of coming back or there's no way of reviving this relationship because someone here has evolved past the level that they were at. And it's not to say that they are you know, like, they're at this level down here and you're at this level up here. No, it's just, it's incongruent. The two energies are incongruent. The, um, the pace in which one person is healing on their journey and another person is healing on their journey, they're just not the same. They're not similar. There's no equilibrium there. And I feel like in this relationship, there wasn't any equi equilibrium and somebody was constantly dimming their light to fit in with someone else's. And I do get this energy also of when someone was finding their feet in this relationship or starting to shine a little bit brighter, this person from the past would pull them down in some way be that through some sort of argument or picking fault at something and it's not so much this person was bullying the other person it's more that this person from the past there's something here about feeling inconsequential or feeling jealous in some way even though this was a romantic partner because I'm getting romantic partner I mean for some people this could have been a family member but I'm not getting that for most people I'm getting that this is romance and look See how my, my candle wanted to agree? You've got talking. So this person is talking about your glow up or they're talking about how you left or how you ghosted them or how you stopped speaking to them. For some, you may have blocked this person. Because it says here, interested, conversing more, awaited message arrives, text, call, email, hovering. So you may have somebody who has your email number. Your email number, that doesn't make sense. Your email address. There's something here about my arm, arms are really itchy. They're emailing or talking to someone about um, this relationship being over. Who are they talking to? There's a conversation going on. They, I'm getting this person knows that they're, it's come to an end, but they don't, they're in denial. That is, they know, they know that it's ended. They know that they have no chance of getting back with someone here, but they still, um, look, you've got Cupid's arrow. Have faith, love is coming, surprise, invitation or meeting, hesitation. This person still wants to try and fight for you. I want to marry you, my love. This person, it's almost like they're not taking no for an answer. That was upside down, wasn't it? Yeah. And this is um, 
healing heart and it's upside down and it says healing from heartbreak so they're not they're still heartbroken but i feel like this person um there's a lot of things that they need to heal from and maybe there was a lot of things they needed to heal from when they were in the relationship with you or whoever this is in the collective and they refuse to um actually look at that because healing is scary and it is arduous and it's challenging it's so flipping worth it it really really is worth it because it's we are our, our you know number one cheerleader when it comes down to it no matter how many friends you have or how big and supportive your family is or how great your job is and your co-workers are your number one supporter the person that's always going to be there for you is you and I don't mean that in a way of become an island and no one can support you. But if you don't support yourself, how are you going to expect other people to? It's that saying of kind of like, if you want other people to love you, then you have to love yourself first, right? This person either doesn't like themselves very much or there are certain things that have happened in their life that they haven't looked at, they haven't properly looked at, they keep running from. And I heard with drink and substances. For some, they may, they may have issues with substances. And it says freedom from toxic relationship or addiction is upside down. So this person still has a lot of um, wounds from maybe a past toxic relationship. This may have ble bled into your relationship or the relationship with this um, relationship with someone in the collective, which may have triggered wounds within somebody in the collective as well. And it says everything is possible is upside down. This person is pining over someone that has left them. Relationship evolving to the next phase, healing the inner child and growth. And there's no obstacle I wasn't faced for our love. This person's very much in fantasy land, unfortunately. Or they fantasize about marrying someone here. Yeah. Have faith, love is coming. They think that if they work hard enough, they're going to be able to get someone back here. Okay, can I get two more cards? And then we'll go on to present energy or someone from the present. So we have here Axe. Wow, okay, so it says break up, separation, stop the pattern, silent treatment, abandonment. This person, even though someone in the collective has walked away from them, this is quite a specific reading. And the thing is the breakup doesn't have to be um, recent. It can be a year ago, it can be two years ago, it can be 10 years ago, whatever. Um, this person is adamant that they're going to get someone from the collective back or they're going to get you back however that resonates for you silent treatments in reverse and abandonment this person may be trying to attach to someone's energy now where i've put this they are replaying conversations from the past this clarity truth revelation solidarity force honor protection and power this person acts like they're still with you in that um if, they, if somebody was to speak badly of you, then they would, you know, stop them. Like, don't speak about them like that. I feel like this person's having a conversation with someone, maybe even one of their exes or a friend of theirs. Um, but this is like, this is, I had an unsavory relationship. An unsavory relationship. Um, and if that person, bad, it's, it's, it's that energy of like, Think of like um, if you've got a sibling and when you were younger, like if you called your sibling names and they'd call you names and you're a butthead and you're this and you're that and blah, blah, blah. But if your friend then turned around and called your sibling a butthead, you'd be like, excuse me, you don't get to call them that. That's my sibling. I get to call them that, but you don't. That's disrespectful. It's that type of energy. And I don't mean sibling wise. I mean, this person, the way that they're thinking about someone from their past which is you or someone from the collective they are st they're still they're talking to someone about you or they're talking to someone about this person from the collective and they are balancing out between going yeah but they did this to me and what a b that person is and then going but i really flipping miss this person i really love this person i really want to work it out with them i feel heartbroken that they walked away they're and they're slowly kind of going back through um conversations or arguments or times when you may have said this is you're not listening to me or you're not helping my you're not help helping my needs or even helping in the house or whatever that may be there may have been an energy of feeling overburdened or feeling overwhelmed and they were ignoring um your need for support in some way 
And then looking back at that and going, I did, I did ignore this and I did ignore that. And then having this conversation with someone here and they're going, yeah, that person's a right old B, aren't they? And they're going, you don't call them that. That's still, that's, that's my wifey or that's my husband or that's my he, she, they. Even though they're not your he, they're, they're not anymore. And you've got here many options, decisions, unconventional string along and one night stand upside down. They um, they want to provide a stable home life for someone. This person is only looking at you or someone in the collective, even though this per person is fully aware that they aren't that someone from the collective doesn't want them. Look, they say soulmates on here, soul connection, partnership, agreement, and soul contract. There may be, I'm sorry that my, my cards, I need to get some more cards. They've got water damage on them. But um, this is, the thing is as well, is that you can have more than one soulmate in your life. And you can have soulmates that are there for a really long time. And they're supposed to walk your path for a very long time because you are elevating each other and learning from each other. And sometimes you have soulmates that are there for a specific lesson. And once you've learned that lesson, you part ways. And this person... They need to be very careful that they do not continue to pine and search after somebody who's already um, fulfilled their part of the contract because that contract has now been broken. If you have, you know, my understanding, and this is my, my opinion, it's not fact, but it's my understanding that we're, before we come into corporeal form, before we are born, we choose what souls from our soul family or soul mates that we wish to learn from when we are in human form. And we make these contracts before we even come into, you know, before we come to earth. But once we have agreed, this is what I'm going to learn. This is what you're going to learn. Let's see how we experience that. That's a light contract, right? When you both learn it, either you will learn other lessons together and continue down that path. Or if it's that specific, you go your, your certain ways. If one person keeps keeps trying to keep the other person in a contract, that becomes a binding contract and that becomes karmic. This person needs to be very, very careful because if they continue the way that they are in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change, and you're gonna come back to me, even though this contract is already finished, they're gonna become karmic, and they're in a karmic cycle at the moment. We all, we all go through karmic cycles until we learn what it is that we need to learn. But this person will become low vibrational if they continue to try and attach their energy to someone that's already moved on. Um, this because you had this agreement and there there is this soul soul connection um so they are a soulmate but i don't feel at the moment that they are a higher level soulmate not in the way that they're acting you've got runner in a codependent relationship fear of intimacy and listening to ego and this is upside down this may be something that they were having to learn in their part of the soul contract was learning about ego was learning about wounding and you know being a runner in a codependent relationship is somebody who is very frightened of opening up and being vulnerable because they're scared that they're going to get hurt and if they are the runner that means the other person was the chaser and i don't know if that resonates with whoever's watching of being the chaser you could have been the runner for all you know but there is definitely this cat and mouse game that was being played between two when they were in this relationship one always wanting to get value by over nurturing over loving and giving and giving and giving and not in a desperate way it's just something that becomes conditioned you have a we can have wounds that are conditioning that we don't even realize that we're doing um and it's a form of maybe what we were lacking when we were younger and this person is the opposite people always leave me so i'm gonna run away and they kept doing this to you or someone in the collective and someone went i've had enough you keep pushing me away. You keep treating me like crap or you keep ignoring my needs. There's only so many times that I'm going to come back. Every time you push me, you're pushing me further and further away. And after a while, I'm going to give up trying. And the minute that someone gives up trying on that relationship, the relationship is doomed. It's done. And there's only so much that one or both can take in a relationship where there's no emotional um, connection. Because once that's gone, when there is no connection there emotionally, that relationship's done and it, there seems to be resentment coming in here from someone and i had the resentment is over so someone may have felt resentment but this guy this guy this girl this um he she they this person they may be learning or they need to learn they're part of the contract 
which is healing from this abandonment, healing from the, the fear of intimacy. And with it being upside down, this is something that they are learning, or this is something that maybe they want to prove that they have learnt. This person may be learning about what a soulmate is. They may have not believed in soulmates. They may have been researching what a soulmate is and realising that um, you and them were a soulmate. But you've got Ten of Cups here to the Four of Pentacles. It's almost like wanting to control the outcome of how you have a happy family how you have happiness the four of pentacles is all about control it's being boxed in you know and then you have the ten of cups here which is happy family it's, it's wonderful these two don't really go together because it's almost like um setting each person to have a specific role and this is how you are happy this is how you have happiness okay the candle is really agreeing like you have to act in a certain way and then you'll be happy and I don't know if this person has kind of set themselves, um, they've set themselves the goal of healing this much and then they can go towards the person in the collective and go, look, I've changed, I've healed this, this and this. Now you have to take me back because there's no reason why you don't want to be with me. Not realising that whoever this is has moved on. They learned what they had to from that relationship and I feel like it was painful. There's something about this being very painful but it being necessary for the change that's coming in. And they don't understand this. This person's not understanding. They're like, no, we can be happy together. We can be happy together. Why have they not let go? So, and even these cards don't want to go together. Deep feelings. They've. It's because they... they um, it's going full circle again to the start, like talking about um, their emotions. Or that comment of stop being so sensitive or you're being emotional or you know it's quite a stereotypical um general thing we've heard before when a woman is expressing themselves and they get even a tone louder than they usually are stop being so emotional why why can't somebody and that's do you know what let me take that the the woman out that's how it used to be now if we are in any way expressive outside of the norms of being happy and positive then there's something wrong or it's embarrassing or it's uncomfortable and this person here has been used to a very long time not speaking how they feel not talking about those vulnerable parts not um i had not going to a therapist somebody may need to go to a therapist i can't actually state whether they do or don't because i'm not one i'm just reading the cards but you've got here the ace of so this is lying to themselves or not speaking on their emotions, how they feel, maybe even something to do with their family. Having to control this, maybe they were controlled by their family, maybe that's a trait that's come through. And I'm not talking about somebody who is going to control what you eat and what you wear and what you say, but someone who, the thing is as well, is control is a form of fear. When you feel like you have to control your environment or control, you know, how you are, control what you eat or whatever that is, it's, it comes back to an insecurity. And when you're feeling insecure, you want to control something to make you feel safe, right? So there's something here with this person's inner child, which makes sense why we had one of these cards here saying healing the inner child. There is this energy also of night and day or light and dark, um, sunny and rainy, two people being slight opposites. Like one person in this relationship was a super optimist and the other person was a pessimist. One person could have been super spiritual and the other person was really logical. Um, and I feel like the person from the past may have been super logical. They don't have to have been an atheist. They could have been religious, but just very logical in the way that they thought about things. There's polar op opposites coming in. Somebody's inner child was very bright and happy and bubbly. And the other ones was hidden because it was so wounded. And it's not to say that anyone in the collective doesn't have a wounded inner child it's just that they were connecting in with their inner child and tapping in and asking how they were a lot more than this person was they were blocking it and i feel like this person has realized this but healing is not a race it's not something that you can just pop a little pill in your mouth and then aha i'm cured no it takes time it takes effort and it is not linear. You can heal one portion and then think, oh, I'm fine. And then something triggers you and it takes you back to the start and there's something else that needs to be healed. And this person wants to rush. 
because they know in their heart that someone in the collective doesn't want them and they it's almost like they feel that they can um what's the word they can convince them i can convince you i'm going to put up a really good um debating whatever to change your mind i've gone through all this i realized that i am you know i haven't been expressing myself and i'm going to now i'm going to stop trying to control my emotions and everything all the time and when i feel stuck i'm gonna i'm gonna find ways to express myself and that's great and i think that's beautiful that anyone from the past that that you may have been a catalyst for them to heal is beautiful but they have to realize again going back to that energy of them not getting fixated on somebody who they had a light contract with that one part of that contract's already been fulfilled they need to fulfill their own because it's for them to heal not because they think they're going to get a, a rendered result from it the minute that you set an intention of how something's going to end up being and controlling it has to be a certain way you throw the lesson out of the window you also throw out the enjoyment of going through an experience that actually makes you grow because for example i love to paint i love painting but i used to and i've stopped doing this now i try to you know i used to get very fixated on how it had to look at the end it had to look a specific way and i would finish a painting within let's say a day or two but then i'd spend weeks afterwards just putting the little finishing touches on it it's done it's finished put it down it's that being able to stop and surrender it because otherwise there's no enjoyment in painting because you know that at the end you're going to be fixating for weeks over this one little eyelash or there's this little part in the background where the sun needs to be shining in a certain way and that's what's coming through here for this person this is a lesson for both and you've got the full new beginnings coming in this new beginning seems to be i think this person is scared of new beginnings they want the familiar now can i get a bit about present energy for the collective what's going on with the collective now oh there's some sort of good karma coming towards someone in the collective for taking that step in honoring themselves and empowering themselves in looking at a situation and going do you know what i've given it the best that i can or even i haven't given it the best that i can but i know that it's not for me and i need to move away from it this is a blessing here and now that i'm looking at the cards here part of this blessing is also moving from that old cycle where this part of the contract this light contract has been fulfilled it has been finished you no longer need to be attached to anything from the past from this person and opening up that door for someone new to come in who is on the same vibration as you because this whole cycle of going through that relationship with somebody in the past would have been very painful and you know even breaking up with that person would be painful whether or not there were still emotions attached to that person or there were none um there's a lot of self-exploration that has happened for someone here since they have become single, I'm hearing. And the healing that they have done is manifesting in an actual higher vibrational soulmate who is going to want to marry this person. That's what we've got here. We've got someone from the past who now wants to um, commit. But I'm hearing some of the reasons are the wrong reasons. And there is someone who is new that's coming in that is marriage worthy it's marriage material somebody who's going to take it very slow because the king of wands in reverse the king of any kind of wand energy is um very sensual energy it's fiery it looks like a phallus you know with it being upside down this person this new person coming in um is going to, there's something about respecting boundaries being very respectful of boundaries um and strength upside down this is a leo but with strength being upside down, I feel like there will be quite um there's gonna be a very strong attraction. But this and I heard weak at the knees. This new person coming in is going to be very, very attractive to the collective or to, to you. But they're going to be very um what's the word? This person's very logical as well, but in a different way. 
I heard mature. They are mature. They're emotionally mature. They're not somebody that would say, stop being so sensitive. If you were expressing yourself or you were upset about something or you were het up about something or excited or whatever that may be. You've got a seven of cups here. There is no illusion with this person. So like we were talking about at the start of this, this reading about the other relationship, the start of the relationship and how someone was saying, you know, you aren't like you used to be. There's no mask or illusion with this new person coming in. They are what they say, or they'll do what they say, or they, you know, they are an open book. They may not express their emotions straight away, but they aren't going to lie about who they are. You know, there's something here about um, going, because I'm here, I'm feeling like a masculine energy, but masculine can be man, woman, he, she, they, um, of going, yeah, I had a tough time. I, you know, I got divorced two years ago, but that's all you might get from them. They won't go into any of the nitty gritty details, but they won't hide that either, that they went through something tough. And it doesn't have to be a divorce. That's just an, ex uh, you know, uh, an example. What I do want to know is a little bit more about this new person. What else do we need to know? Emperor. The new person coming in is an emperor. This is somebody who... Um, Wow, they have all of the kings. So they have the king of wands, which we've got here. They have the king of pentacles, the king of swords, the king of cups. This is a well-rounded person. And didn't I say back over there that this person was saying that they are well-rounded? They want to be well-rounded. I feel like this person from the past is rushing in because they know something new is coming in. Or they know that you may be at the point in your life where you are open to letting new love in, not old love. Yeah, look, Eight of Swords. Eight of Swords here to the Nine of Swords. This is letting go of stress. Letting go of stress. You have someone here who's a very good communicator. This Emperor is a very good communicator. They may be quite sharp with their words. It doesn't mean that they are rude. They're just very, I'm getting they're very direct. This person is direct. They will tell you as it is. Yeah, look. There's no mixing their words. This person is, um, I like this energy. It's very, um, I know what I want to do. I'm going to, they're very good at making decisions is what I'm getting. And they will make snap decisions that are very well thought out. They can think on their feet. You have the queen of pentacles coming here. So this person is very good at attracting abundance. They're very good um, business mind, but also they're very good at creatively thinking outside of the box when it comes to business ideas when it comes to making money grow when it comes to um connecting to that law of abundance um and when it comes to money yeah this person in four of wands very stable family person they may have children or want children this person is giving me um aries you got the emperor there as well and we've also got the we had the four of wands coming out which is um it always reminds me of um the root chakra because it's all about foundations and the angel that resides over like foundations and structures and the body is archangel Uriel, which is a golden pentacle you see the symbol is a golden pentacle with um, a fiery red um ruby red fire around it this person is um i heard regal or they're just there they don't have to be older than you, but they come across as an old soul or they're maturer than their age or they're wise. They're very wise. You've got the four of swords here to the two of wands. Something about um, sleep. This person may not sleep a lot. What's slowing them down? What's slowing them down? What is slowing them down? You've got the high priestess coming out to temperance. This person can be a high priest or high priestess. There is definitely an age difference here. This person could be younger than you, actually. There, yeah, this... I feel like this, this emperor that comes in, this new person, may feel a little bit intimidated by your connection to the divine or just your connection to how confident you are i heard butterflies and you've got nine of cups to the three of cups yeah this person finds um they fi they find you um there's something about being very comforting you are a blessing they're going to see you as a blessing but they're not going to say anything why 
This person is used to be very regal. I don't know what this is about butterflies. Two of cups to the six of cups. You may remind them of someone from their past. Queen of swords. You may remind them of someone from the past. Because you've got queen of swords coming out. You've got the six of cups. You've got the two of cups. And you've got the queen of swords. So someone from their past who was a very um, positive impact on this person. You remind them of them. The six, um, excuse me, the, the queen of swords coming out. This is somebody who is a great leader who has, um, I had the quip of the tongue. So someone who's quick witted. And you've got the queen of swords, the queen of pentacles. Six of cups, yeah. And then you also have the two of cups. This is a very balancing relationship. Now you have the princess of cups, which is the page of cups in reverse, and then you've got the four. There is the energy of this person may not be an open book with their emotions. They're open with everything else though. I'm also getting um, Sagittarius energy from this person. Sagittariuses are, um, I love the energy of Sagittariuses. They can be stubborn, very creative, but they shoot from the hip. And that's what I'm getting from this person. Hard worker, a really hard worker. There's an energy of um, you bringing a softness to this person. And they're going to bring in a motivation or, or put a fire under your butt in some way. Or vice versa. And you've got the seven of wands here and then you've got the chariot to the ten of wands. This is to do with like their internal healing or their internal feelings. The, I'm seeing the only two things that I see that are similar between these two, the past energy and this, this new energy, is that there is, um, there's almost like a similarity when it comes to talking about emotions. The difference is, is that this person is more um, emotionally aware of who to be vulnerable with. And they're going to feel that they can be vulnerable with you or someone from the collective as time goes on. So I don't know if this is like a, a business or a friend coming in. I don't know. I do know that there's there's a lot of physical attraction here, but they're not going to show it. Or they're going to be very, very, very respectful. I heard like the olden days, so I don't know. Um, there's something about being taught to court a woman or a man. Or to go out and date them, take them out on actual dates. Before any, I heard, before any hanky-panky. So I don't know if this person was brought up by their grandparents or... This person, maybe they they are older and um, they just have old fashioned views or they are younger and they have just old fashioned views. But this chariot here is about movement and it's about healing. And then you have the seven of wands. This is the fact that this is like an um, internal struggle. There is, yeah, this is healing. I heard um, hearing my prayers. This person may have been manifesting in someone who is their equal. The four. They're moving away from some sort of stress that they've had in their life. Now, what are the challenges between... Um, now, before I do that, I actually want to see... Let's see, um, how are they going to feel initially when they meet the collective? So this is really for singles who have not met this person yet. I am so close you don't even know it, but it's upside down. So this person's going to be quite distant at first. But you have palm tree, stability, security, permanence, growth, endurance and flexibility. I heard the queen of pentacles coming out again. So this is Taurus energy. They're going to find um, your energy very luxurious, but also very, um, there's something about your energy being very, um, not reliable. You, you make this person feel safe. And I don't mean that you're a safe option. There's something about your energy and your actions that make this person feel safe and comfortable and they've not had that either for a very long time or they've never had that. Anything else that would like to come out, please? Thank you. Tell me more about this person. 
butterfly relationship evolving to the next phase healing the inner child and growth that came out on this one as well the difference is that that person over there was doing that to get you back this person here is going to be healing as they um connect with you and i feel it's very much on a um a very authentic and natural way so this could be a friendship that turns into a romance this could be a business partnership that becomes something more okay but it's definitely something where this person is a soulmate and this person is going to this is about they're going to get butterflies in their stomach over you and i don't feel like this person either has ever had that or they've ever shown that i don't think they've ever had that and you've got here I know I made a mistake and it's upside down. This person, I don't know if this person, um, they can be a bit of a hothead. This person's very passionate. They're giving me like Italian energy. I'm not saying that every Italian is hot-headed and, you know, and stubborn and blah, blah, blah. But that's the energy that I'm getting. I'm not saying they are Italian. But this, I know I made a mistake. They may not like to um, back down in an argument. Um but you've got love call. Someone expresses love, a message of love, thinking of you and letting you know. But this, I feel like once they do open up and express how they feel, they are like, when you think of like a cane corso, you know, the breed of dog, they look really flipping scary and they have a hard exterior. They are God dogs, right? But then you see that cane corso with their owners at home and they are big old softies who love having their belly rubbed you know and like having their treats and being called darling and having a little baby voice come here my little darling that's the energy that i'm getting from this emperor very hard exterior very kind of like stern and then when you get to see who they really are they're gorgeous and you've got girl and the, the snake upside down and this is empath and narcissist paradigm being charmed or used enabled or boundaries and it's upside down this person may have been treated badly in the past and they hide this they've gone through that they're not a narcissist then they're, they're not i heard they're not someone's usual pattern or they're not someone's usual type which is really good which is really good to hear isn't it anything else that wants to come out anything else that would like to come out about this new person coming in this emperor yeah you've got here passion insane chemistry like each other equally and having fun and it's upside down they're going to be very close when you first meet them they're going to be very open when it comes to um honesty about business about friendships about things they like they don't like and so on and so forth but when it comes to matters of, of the heart that's closed off this is not going to be like you know a weekend from business and they're like hey you want to go out for a date they're not going to do that this person's very respectable respectable but also there's something about them going through something very similar in the past with somebody who was either unstable or they may have overgiven i heard like you for someone here they overgave and overgave and they got walked all over so they've kind of like an armadillo armored armored themselves up and it's going to take a while literally a while because you've got here as well not to date in reverse not dealing hurt avoiding a conversation call person boundaries and still angry this person isn't they're not angry they're not you know with this upside down they're not hurt they're not avoiding this conversation or boundaries and this person if you were like you know once you've been friends with them for a while would to ask them about their past they'd most likely tell you but like i said they wouldn't go into details not today this person is very earnest i do get that they're very earnest they may suffer from anxiety it's almost like when they meet you or they meet someone in the collective whoever this is for they're going to feel instantly that they like you but they are going to keep it to themselves because it's almost like testing the water in a swimming pool they want to dip their toe in to see whether it's cold or not. But the last time they jumped into the pool, last week or whenever, it was freezing cold and they got hypothermia. It's that kind of energy of a little bit of fear there, of being open in that way in case they get hurt again. So they have to be sure. They have to be sure, sure. And then you've got, I'm so close, you don't even know it. This has given me more physical, as in timing as well. This is timing rather than emotions. When this person comes in, they will be very distant when it comes to actual emotions, actual romantic emotions. But this person's coming in very soon for someone here. Not enough. Frustrated in a relationship, lack of confidence, self-sabotage, fear, ego issues and jealousy, whoever they were with. 
it was not fulfilling it wasn't fulfilling and you've got um date meeting someone new dating getting back out there plan set a date i'm getting this is going to be a business date at first this is going to be a business or a friendship date i will dance with you forever in this life i don't know what that means but it's upside down okay so i have a feeling that whoever it is that you remind them of is no longer here this may be like a past person and you remind them of that person in a good way in a really good way and that might be where the safety energy is coming in because if this is like their grandmother i don't know why i'm getting something like that or a best friend at school there's someone that may that may not be with them anymore that could be a guide or something that makes them feel safe or when they think of that person they have really lovely nostalgic memories of them and there are qualities or traits that you may hold that are the same to this person so they straight away associate you with this person which is thumbs up right um i want to know before i go what the challenges are be be between this past person and this new person coming in because there's a reason also why i like spirit kind of called me to do such an intensive or extensive detailed re reading on someone from the past and then this new person so let's know what is this um what are the challenges that may be coming in between um this past person and then the new person what do we need to know what do we need to know about any challenges that may be coming up with this past person okay so you've got healing you've got temperance you've got balancing you have also um the four of cups is to do with usually it's to do with dismissal rejection or not seeing things that are right in front of you but it's actually upright i mean it's the other way around so this is healing things that you know about when it comes to your past there's something that needs to be let go of and i know that some people will be like i'm over that person blah blah but if in any way throughout this reading it has caused any type of um defensiveness if you felt emotionally triggered when you're thinking about your past then there is still something there that needs to be healed. And that's not me criticizing in any way, shape or form. Um, I, you know, nearly a year ago now, nine months, 10 months ago, I broke up with my, you know, then fiance. And I know there's things that I'm still healing from, um, but I'm nearly there. I'm nearly completely there. Um, so I'm not criticizing it in any way, shape or form. It's just spirit asking you to be very honest with the last pieces of what it is that when you think about that past ex or you think about that past person where is it is it your heart is it your throat you feel it in is it your solar plexus your sacral chakra because that will tell you more or less the vibration of what area you need to kind of um there's something about being vulnerable in that area something that you need to let go of this is letting go of control two of cups I'm so close you don't even know it. There's some sort of codependency traits that maybe had been picked up in that relationship. Because you've got to remember as well is that even though this person from the past may have been dysfunctional or they weren't claiming and owning how they felt and they were closing themselves up, it doesn't mean that we're scot-free. It means that, you know, in that relationship, if we were the over-nurturer, that was our wounding constantly having to overgive, 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 overgive. And also we stayed in that relationship. We stayed, whether it was a year or six months, 10 years, whatever that may be, we took our power back when we walked away from those types of relationships. And again, that's not me criticizing by stay, saying you stayed in that relationship, but it takes two to make a relationship and two to break one. So I think spirit or you know your guides are asking you, what was what were the, the, um, the wounds? that came to the surface when you were in that past relationship that you feel are still being triggered when you think about that person from the past because you've got emperor here the emperor here in reverse when they're in reverse this is somebody that has they have the opportunity to grow in every single area when it comes to abundance when it comes to emotions when it comes to um you know the ones when it which is to do with motivation and action and and also with the with the swords which is about speaking our minds and communication but they choose not to or there's something that's holding them back and also this is talking about um 
emotions, especially to do with how we get angry, our root chakra, feeling safe, feeling secure. And also something to do with the first house, the way that we look at our body. What part of your body especially do you feel that pain or that sadness or anger towards the person from the past? Like I said, there's something here, it may be even the root chakra. And you've got the empress. Look at that, you've got the emperor to the empress. This is going to bring in a lot of empowerment, releasing something here. That won't be for everyone, okay, because this is a collective reading. But no, if there is still sadness or anger or resentment, or F that person, you know, F that B, that person did this, this and this to me. Figure out where in your body you're feeling that anger because it needs to be released. And the thing is as well is that you don't have to forgive that other person in the past for what they did, but you can forgive yourself for the energy that you invested into that person at that time because it's not saying that you are at fault or that you should be shamed or anything like that, but it's going, do you know what? I poured a lot of love and trauma into a relationship when I should have been pouring love into myself, okay? And doing so may actually help to release some of this. Yeah, I don't know if someone, there's someone's angry here about how things ended and you've got the lovers in reverse. Someone's, I don't know if someone sees that their, their past person as being very immature, very childish, very immature this could have ended in divorce this the six of wands is usually about victory because you've just come out of the five of wands which is conflict and everyone has one everyone has one wand and they're all whacking each other and not really helping each other out but the six of wands is about moving away from that conflict there's still a little bit of baggage there you still have to heal and grieve from whatever that conflict was but you're moving on and there's a celebration coming in right when it's this way it's either being stuck in that energy or there being some sort of failure Please understand that when I say that, you know, a relationship, it takes two to make a relationship and two to break it. It doesn't mean that I'm pointing at you and going, you are a failure. And the reason that that relationship broke down is because you are crap or because you are this or that. No, in any way, shape or form. It's just an encouragement for us to take accountability for the part that we played in that relationship. Because you have to remember, look, unless it is something like domestic V or SA, sexual A, when we take that and we move that to the side, anything else, we choose, we make choices when it comes to what energy we're going to allow into our into our lives and not. So it's a choice, which means we're not a victim. We co-create the experiences that we have. And I can say for personal experience with my ex, you know, I stayed in a relationship that was dysfunctional, that was unhealthy because I thought I could fix this person. And I thought all that person needed was more love but they had to love themselves first it's not saying that my ex was a nasty horrible person because he wasn't he just had a lot of um, wounds that he refused to heal and because he wouldn't heal himself we couldn't heal the relationship and i couldn't help to heal that relationship either because all i was doing was pouring all my energy into another person and not into myself so i i wasn't even looking at my own needs but i take accountability for the part that i played in that relationship breaking down as well as the expectations I put that were illusions. And that's what I'm talking about. Someone here needs to take accountability in that way, in the most gentlest and non-critical way. That's what I'm talking about. No one here is a failure. Anything that doesn't work out in our life is just a lesson that turns into a blessing. It really, really is. This is this this new relationship here is about um opening up yeah look you've got the nine of wands coming out here this is the wounded warrior this is someone who's been through quite a lot and is expecting anything good that's coming in to have that tinge of maybe it's going to happen again and we got that right at the start of this relation of this relationship of this reading it's been that long you guys it's been that long but you have the moon coming out this is emotions this is sacral chakra you know this may be also healing wounds from the mother line or the father line because your sacral chakra is connected to um, your family. The emotions that are tied to our family experiences, to creativity, to the divine feminine within us. It also connects to our, um, our third eye and our third eye is our intuition. It's how we um, feel confident in the choices we make or how we doubt ourselves. And those two, the third eye and the sacral being connected together 
with the six of cups this is new experiences coming in to heal things this is what you're being asked to look at now and this is something that I feel is going to go into this new relationship and I don't mean that you're going to be bleeding things from the past relationship into a new one it's just going to give opportunity for both parties emperor and empress you and this person to feel comfortable in being vulnerable with each other at the appropriate time if that makes sense to heal and I think that's beautiful, but it's knowing that this person from the past, they are going to, I feel like they're going to try and contact in some way. Are they going to contact? Are they going to contact? Ace of Swords, they're blocked. This person is blocked. They are, comp they're blocked, I feel, on online or telephone, because the Page of Swords is about learning and um, kind of assimilating that information and gossip and stuff. So they're really unhappy about the fact that they can't get through to you. But they want to. Anything else we need to know? Yeah, they're gutted about this. They're absolutely gutted about this. Justice. They feel like they're getting some sort of negative karma because of this. Because they were so unloving or unkind to somebody who was so kind. With the Queen of Cups coming out here. There's something about them feeling like they manipulated you or they know that they manipulated you. This is someone from the past. And they may have lied about gaslighting, but they did. Now, these are the last cards before I go. What do we need to know about someone from the past first? Anything from the past? Anything that we should be looking out for from the person from the past? What do we need to know about them? What do we need to know about the person from the past who's blocked? Amazing, thank you. Thank you. Bandages. This person's taking time to heal. Listen, they're even blocked out of somebody's um, dream state. Rah. Someone here is not messing about. What do we need to know about the healing journey between these two? As in, from past to going into this new relationship. So this area in between. What do we need to know as an advice from spirit, please? Come through. What advice do you have? Jack of all trades and my fair lady. Now this is a new deck and I don't know where I've put the box for it. But Jack of all trades is getting me, it's giving me that, in, that energy of dipping your hand into all different types of things that help you to express yourself. Because some people work really good with, let's say for example, talk therapy. Whereas others don't want to do that. They may have, they may be a qualified therapist and they don't need to. It could be that they, you know, you like to write down your emotions or some people like um, art therapy or they like somatic re release or dancing or it could be um, connecting with um, a community doing the same type of creative expression, whatever that may be for you. But Jack of all trades is saying connect with other people the way that you're going to heal from whatever it is that is hurting or maybe kind of like being compartmentalized and put to the back of your brain because you're like, I don't want to deal with that anymore connecting with others trying different things out until you find something that works for you for someone it might even be spinning class i heard it could be just working out and my fair lady this is tapping in with your um your feminine side for someone here this is really tapping in with your feminine side which makes sense why we're getting third eye and we're getting the um sacral chakra because that really is divine feminine energy there and look you've got purple on here as well really tapping in with your divine feminine and looking at different things that can help to, for you to express that it's going to help with any wounding that may still be there when it comes to a past love or when it comes to a past wounding to do with romance when it, it comes to do with someone dimming your light okay and anything any advice for this new relationship when it comes in anything that the collective should be looking at oh wow 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 Oh my gosh, that's too many cards. I would like one, please. Just one. One card, please. Silent cries. There may be this energy of... I'm getting from whoever this new person is, it's going to be a very slow burn. This is not... I said that before, but I feel like if you're working on a project together, this person may not express how they feel straight away. And this person is a deep feeler. They could be a Scorpio. They could be a Scorpio. They're a very deep feeler. Deep, deep feeler. Anything else? Colours is upside down. 
So this is telling me the start of this relationship is going to be very kind of like handshake. This is um, this is a formal meeting kind of thing. Free to go. You've got free to go on here as well. So this person may be going through a dark night of the soul when you meet them. But it's going to become a very beautiful relationship. But there needs to be patience in it. I'm going to leave that there. I really hope that gave you some confirmation and clarity on what you already intuitively know. If you are new to my channel and this resonated, I would love for you to hit on the like, the subscribe and the notification bell so you can see more of my content. If you are a returning subscriber, you guys, soul family, I love you. Thank you so much for coming back time and time again. Thank you for giving me, you know, your comments, your ideas. Um, when I spell things wrong or pronounce things wrong, I, I like being criticised because I'm ever the, the student. I learn as I go along. Um... I love your humour. I love you, your emails. Thank you so much. Those of you that have been emailing about readings, um, I shall be emailing back quite a few of pe people tonight. And if you haven't heard of, from me by tomorrow, just send me a prompt email because there's so many to get through. Please know that my readings go really quickly. I'm only offering 15 minute readings at the moment, one five minutes um, at the price of 55 sterling pounds. That is 70 dollars that's us dollars okay i am not offering 30 minute readings i will not put two 15 minute readings together if you want to buy more than one 15 minute reading you can you're more than welcome to do so but you will either get them at different times on the same day or you'll get them on different days okay um something else i was going to say yes i am still collecting for loku's dog and cat care rescue in sri lanka the reason that we are um me and my sister are kind of working to to get as much money as we can for this shelter is because shelters animal shelters in sri lanka are far and few be be between but there are so many street dogs and there are so many street cats that aren't being neutered that aren't getting medication that if they get hit by cars they are literally left and there are dogs out there that have deformities because they could have been taken to a hospital or a vet and had an operation and been fine but no one does that and it's not because people in sri lanka do not like animals or don't love animals they view animals differently they will feed them some rice and stuff like that but if the dog has mange or the dog's been hit by a car nothing they can do about it and they will leave them seriously and there aren't that many dog um or cat shelters in sri lanka the place that this shelter is um based in is in the i think it's the east coast of sri lanka i keep getting it mixed up between the east and the west and the nearest um the nearest vet hospital is mainland so sri lanka is a tear a teardrop like this okay so i think it's down here where the, sh the shelter is mainland candy is in here can you imagine how many hours they would have to drive with an injured animal and from what my sister has told me is that many animals pass away while in in transit because they don't get there in time. And the person who runs this shelter, her name is Connie, um, she's been doing this for decades. At the moment, she has 150 street dogs in her care and she has um, 50 street cats. And even if these animals pass away um, on the way to the vet, she still has to pay for the transport, okay? Anything that you can afford a dollar, one pound, if you can afford that, that is doubled when it goes into Sri Lankan rupee. Um, so everything that we can actually send to them is a lifesaver. It's a life changer. It means they can buy medication. They can buy more food. They can buy toys. They can buy sleeping mats. They can pay for the transport that costs up to $700 a month. Um, know that if you can't afford, that's absolutely fine. This is not a pressure for you to do. It's only if you are able to. If you are, brilliant. If you can't, I just ask, please, can you share the GoFundMe to people that you know love animals, people that want to help out with vulnerable souls? That would be awesome. With that being said, I'm going to leave it there. Anyone that would like to leave a donation, for me, you can. It's not something that I'm really highlighting at the moment because I think this dog's um, and cat's care shelter is more important. Um, please do not get scammed by people in the comment section pretending to be me. My handle is the 111 cove. It's the Cove 111, excuse me. The Cove 111. If you look at the handle of somebody reaching out, if it says Bromins Cove Tarot, it's not me, okay? I would never give out a WhatsApp number anyway. And I won't chase you for any readings. If you want a reading from me, you've got to email me one, okay? With that being said, you awesome, awesome souls. I will see you later. Love you guys. Bye. Happy Valentine's.